always from in our journey, the business was secondary. Mm. I love that. The vision is first. We have a vision to deliver the mission. Okay. Mm. To be Rasulu Rasulillah. Ah. Rasulillah ah. Rasulillah so, The messenger of the messenger of Allah. Messenger of the messenger. Let's talking about the dawah. Dawah is not only selling books. Okay, now you, you learn how to make dawah through book. But there is many other methods, other asalib, other means, wasail, that you can deliver the dawah, which is also connected to your existing business. Mm. Uh, by the way, I'm going to share with you, I have a child, or I, I say I have two child, that, that now allow you to sleep without reading for them at least five books. Five books. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah. I feel so sad sometimes I have to off light because it is already late night. <laughs> mashallah. Yet they're crying, you not completed the job today. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> you, you know, some of them, they say, the book I read for them actually is re- many times I read, still they wanted to read the same thing. Yeah. Ah, yep, yep, yeah, I, I, can mm, yeah. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Yeah, so what I, th- I say to my wife, this is a very, very good culture we can develop within them and they will continue afterward. Ah, so please, okay, take this as a challenge and be patient and do our best to not stop them from doing this. By the way, sometimes the book is nothing, Wallahi, it's not Islamic book. Mm. Oh, just casual reading, right? Uh, it, uh, it's talking about Dana Suya. I do a word. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ever gone shopping in Mecca while you're out for your Umrah or Hajj trip? If you go to the Mecca Commercial Center, the shopping mall that's attached to the Hilton Hotel in Mecca, as you go up the escalators, one of the very first shops that you will see is this epic Islamic bookstore that sells books primarily in English. That shop is Da'wah Corner Bookstore. And for this episode, we interview the founder of that business, Brother Farid Abu Ahmad. Brother Farid, or his full name, Faridullah Ahmad Hussein, is a Rohingya professional businessman. Born and raised in the state of Arakan in Burma, he studied at the International Islamic University Chittagong in Bangladesh and received a diploma under the supervision of Islamic University of Al-Imam Muhammad bin Saud. He is currently residing in Malaysia with his family as the CEO of Da'wah Corner, in addition to also playing an active role in the Malaysian Da'wah scene, organizing local courses and conferences such as the Straight Path Convention. In this episode, Brother Farid shares his origin story and how that led to the establishment of his businesses today. He shares about his roots and upbringing in Burma, experiencing firsthand the difficult persecution faced by his people, the Rohingya people, after which he moved to Bangladesh and eventually to Mecca, where he started off working odd jobs. He shares about his passion in da'wah and how he had this high ambition of fulfilling the demand of spreading Islamic knowledge in the English language through books. Eventually, how, Qadr Allah, Allah, Allah opened up the doors to meet the right people at the right time. The right people who eventually supported his vision and ambition that led to the opening of Da'wah Corner Bookstore and eventually leading up to the opening of his main center of businesses here in Malaysia. He talks about his focus and vision in this business and some entrepreneurial tips, especially how we can implement Ihsan in our business, especially the importance of building relationships, which is, I quote, the most important capital in our business. How this capital eventually led to bigger opportunities, not only in business, but also in da'wah, which eventually led to opening up doors and adding value to the local community here in Malaysia. He also shares with us some personal tips on how to develop a reading habit and also my personal favorite part, how we can inculcate the reading habit in our children. Welcome to the Barakah Effect Podcast. If you find value in this episode, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, share this episode with others to join us in our mission to inspire communities of high achievers striving for continuous growth and excellence in dunya and hereafter. Hope you guys find value in this one. This is episode 52 from Passion in Da'wah to Global Brand with Farid Abu Ahmad. أهل القرى آمنوا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته 
Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Barakah Effect podcast. The topic of our discussion this week is from passion in da'wah to global brand. And mashallah for this episode, we have my friend, CEO and founder of Da'wah Corner Bookstore, Brother Faridullah Ahmad Hussein, aka Abu Ahmad. Hayyakumullah. Ahlan wa sahlan, Brother Farid. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Thank you very much. Zakallah khair, akhi, Brother Faisal. Mashallah. Thank you for making time for our episode today of the Barakah Effect podcast. Mashallah. I feel honored and Zakumullah Khairan for inviting me. I hope that inshallah I can add something that everyone out there will benefit. Inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, I mean. So Mashallah, Brother Farid, just uh, before we begin our conversation today, maybe we just want to share with the brothers here and also the, the listeners out there how, how we got to know each other. So uh, maybe just to share uh, how I got to know you was uh, I was actually a, a customer at Dawah Corner Bookstore. And mashallah, just to tell you my experience, uh, since day one, setting foot into Dawah Corner Bookstore in the, the SS14 one in PJ, it was like love at first sight. Mashallah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I always find it so hard to restrain myself from buying things. <laughs> And I always get this sharp, sharp question from my wife. When are you going to read this? <laughs> 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 so mashallah and then just just in unrelated incidents uh i remember throughout the years we went to umrah so yeah uh there was every time you go to makkah you see a lot of these bookstores and there was one bookstore that always stands out and i was like mashallah really nice titles really book really good selection of books dvds but it never crossed my mind like i i never really looked at the name of the shop until one time i was like that was corner oh okay And then when I went to Malaysia, oh wait, is this like the same Da'wah corner? <laughs> and then I got yeah, to the, yeah. yes, the same one. Allah. Allah. Actually, I have the same thought when I went to Makkah and it's Da'wah corner. Is it, is it the same one as in Malaysia? SubhanAllah. It's, it's something. I had, it's I had the, the same, same question thought. we face most of the time. The people <laughs> ask me the same question. Ah, so, there, so a lot of people ask you that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> so even I, even I, my, my first, I, I bought a Da'wah book online. I think it was four, five years ago. Uh, the book is Evolution of Faith, uh, written by Bilal Phillips. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, um, is is this bookstore a Malaysian? Because you have so, so much place, right? So I think, subhanAllah, you are a global brand. Inshallah. Actually, uh, it's just, uh, you remind me something, Brother Aziz. Yeah. First of all, I find... Uh, All of you, my customers. So I have to give you a customer service. That you <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, there is a staff come for interview to join with us. Mm -hmm. uh, one time. Then the, she was telling us, I thought this Dawa Kona is a UK's brand. It's not from Makkah because it's a quality and service and its presentation is like Uh, oh. than usual uh, traditional bookstore. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Only today I came to know this is a, uh, from Saudi atau this is, is run by a Burmese Muslim brother. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not, mashallah. Not many bookstores are selling online back then, right? And that one, Book Honor is one of the earliest, I think. It's, I think, the hours, but it's the content and the authenticity of the contents. Mm. Mm. Yes, that's what stands out for me, especially mm -hmm. when I want to look for the books that are, let's say, filtered out or the ones who are uh, good in content. Um, it's no no other bookstore currently I look for in Malaysia than Da'wah Corner is the go to the go to list. Mashallah, barakallahu fikum. We feel heavy, Aki. We are responsible for that. <laughs> yeah, mashallah. That's a really good mashallah. way of putting it. Yeah. That, hence, that's why I always get the feelings like a kid in a candy store, you know, uh, I can't mm. stop, you know. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah. Actually, uh, yeah, so that's one. But I think um, what, what when the time when we got to know each other the most was when I started to get involved volunteering for the activities that you co-organize with uh, other locals. Uh, and the very first one was the first time that Mufti Mank came to Malaysia. And that was back in 2012. 2012. Yeah. Oh, 10 years ago. Yeah. In fact, actually, as, we, as we're recording this right now, it's almost exactly 10 years. Yes. So, Mashallah. Mashallah. 
Yeah, mashallah. And I, I, that, that, that event has a very uh, strong personal significance to me because that was the first time ever that I was emceeing for an event of that size. Uh, and I still remember the funny, like, um, it was a very simple script. Like, you know, you introduce the speaker because Mufti Man was in Malaysia for the first time, right? So you introduce him. It was like a five-minute script, but I, th- I think I rehearsed like six hours for that behind the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a nervous breakdown. And then uh, people were like, uh, I remember some of the pre- comments were like, oh, brother, you're so nat- or you're so talented. So, what? Talent? Have you seen me work hard? <laughs> Talent's got nothing to do with this. <laughs> so, mashallah. And uh, I still remember uh, that the event was at night, right? I think it was after Maghrib, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It was at University of Malaya. And at that time, my mother was still a professor lecturing there. Uh, I still remember like uh, after the event, we had a dinner with Mufti Mank. Correct. And then I saw his notes, his, the, his notes that uh, he scribbled in Arabic for the talk. I think it was about steadfastness. And then um, and I asked him, oh, Sheikh, uh, mashallah, how long, how long does it take for you to prepare a talk like this? Like, when did you prepare these notes? Then he, was, he just said nonchalantly, after Asr. <laughs> after Asr, uh, al-yam, today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay, this is the difference between amateurs and pros. It takes me, it takes me before Asr to do a five-minute introduction. <laughs> it takes me after Asr to do a full-length talk. Mashallah. Mashallah. It was one of, one of the wonderful lectures that ever. Had. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good content. I'm still uh, encouraging the brothers and sisters to watch that particular lecture. Oh, that one, huh? The step by step. Oh. Uh, yeah, we have that DVD in that corner, right? Yes, yes. Also available in the YouTube. Yeah, oh. mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah, we can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, MMKL 2012. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. I was, yeah. And then eventually the uh, MMKL became the Straight Path Convention, right? The first one was oh, in yes. uh, 2015. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So mashallah, the, uh, these events. So yeah, since, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to add as well. Uh, since that first, ever since that, event emceeing I became MC like every year so I guess I didn't do such a bad job so Alhamdulillah thank you for calling me again <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when, when the event became the straight path convention that was a very big privilege for me so mashallah that was the first one was 2015 I still remember we had like Mufti Mank Sheikh Muhammad Salah Sheikh Saeed Ragia we had Abdurrahim Green and I remember that I was I was very nervous for that because I, I I couldn't imagine myself doing an event because we would watch that like on you know Peace TV and to be a part of that to be emceeing for that mashallah it was a, it's a really really powerful experience for me mm. so yeah so jazakallah khairan to brother Farid and actually team. when when you choose something it's not just because you like to choose because we have an objective when we choose an MC how far he can go ah. And how much support that he need from us. Okay. It's not this one-time choice, then we left you and we choose different. No, we are looking uh, here something for long term to do something uh, with the country, to do something with the uh, 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 local talent, how far he can go to the uh, international stage. Mm, so sure. that's why you, you remember sometimes I share with you a lot of ideas here and there. Yes. To, yeah, you know, to make his as a more uh, effective uh, and also to come the next is much better than previous. Mm. I think uh, we were, we did well to improve ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Yeah. One thing that really stood out for me was uh, I still remember doing the emceeing for 2015 and brother Abdul Rahim Green, he, he, he just backstage. He was like, Akhi, come here. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what's this about? And he says, uh, uh, you should be a speaker one day. And I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, this is my first time emceeing for this. And I, I felt like this was completely out of my league. I felt like, like oh, what, what, is, what are you talking about? And he says, no, 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 brother. And he said it in the most uh, serious and yet encouraging face. He said, no, brother, we need more people out there like you. And, and like, you know, you have that courage to step up on stage and to give mm-hmm. talks. So train yourself. And he immediately gave me tips how. Okay, start storytelling with children because children give you immediate feedback. And I'm like, wow, this guy gave me tactics straight away on the spot. You, so you much know what he told me? He's, yeah. He told me that why you have to invite me? You have to hear people. Really? Oh. <laughs> oh, mashallah. Sure. That was back in the, the first one, huh? Yeah. Yeah, mashallah. And and yeah, I mean, I, I have to thank Brother Farid once again. I think I've done that before, but just to thank you again for the opportunities that you give. I think you are the one who pushed behind the scenes to plant the 
the crazy idea that Faisal should be a, a one of the speakers. So I got that opportunity in the 2018. This one, actually, this one, the 2018 straight path uh, about the Sunnah, and mashallah. So I never thought that was possible. So yeah, jazakallah khairan, brother Farid. It's mean that we don't end up here, Akhi. We have to go far more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inshallah. So let's get into the main discussion of our conversation today from passion in da'wah to a global brand. So Brother Farid, maybe you want to share with the audience out there maybe just some background about how you started and how maybe the origins of Da'wah Corner. Okay, you, you want the origin of Da'wah Corner or origin of me, Akhi? You, I guess. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Where, where, where did you feel like wherever comfortable for you, inshallah? Okay, I think it's, it's good to the, the, out there, there are our brothers and sisters who are listening to us now to know who I am actually. So, so it's not, nothing to, to do with the personality, but I think it's better to know who I am and where I came from. Yeah. Uh, I am actually a brother the originally from Burma, from the state of Arakan, where the, we call the people of Rohingya. I am one of them, Rohingya people. I've been born in the city of uh, Mongdo in Araka. But when the people talk about Rohingya, I think I need to share the, uh, what actually really happened with them, which is also some uh, effect of that situation I lived is still within me and is reflecting. Mm. Okay, so the uh, most of the people believe that the Rohingyas suffer only because of the religion. Oh. And all in the religious affairs. No, it's not true. They actually have been suffering in every level of life, in every stage of life. Let me put you in a short in this way. The story began like this. When the colonization of the British started in Arakan or our region, and followed by the occupation of the Burmese regime come to the Arakan state and occupy. They found that there's a two race or two community living in a very cooperative and coexisting peacefully in the Arakan state. They found that if these two groups is cooperative, they cannot rule these people. So they try to create conflict within them, which is the strategy of the British to rule the other parts of the world. Okay. Divide and rule, what is called is it. Yeah. They found that Rohingya have something very unique. If they uphold to this, they never rule us. Oh. They found that they are in history, they are very rich. Oh, okay. Okay, number one. They found that they are culturally very unique oh. and they hold a very powerful faith oh. and as well as they look different in terms of complex and the language oh. so with all these elements if they uphold to this we cannot rule them so they start to think how we can destabilize these people so basically they do two things Number one, to create conflict between the Rakhine and the Muslims, Rohingya in Arakan, with the state sponsor plan and a strategy. And number two, this is very interesting, which is stripping them from their identity. Mm. Stripping them from their identity. So I came to know my experience, Akhi. If you were to to kill a nation or community and they are alive, just take off their identity. You will be totally paralyzed and you don't have to do anything. You cannot progress in any field. Mm -hmm. Just take out your identity. So what Burmese did, that the Rohingya are not indigenous people of Arakan. By announcing that they are not the people of Arakan. From that time, they blocked them from every field, including the economy, education, justice, as well as the religious. So they mm -hmm. become the backward in every field, intellectually, which is end up 
today's crisis you see around us. Right. So so they 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 created that they they sort of uh, retroactively created the identity that you are Correct. not from here. Oh. Correct. Correct. So if you ask me what is the highest level degree of persecution a, a human can be faced from the opponent is just take the identity. Mm. Today if brother Faisal have no identity you are you don't have your IC you are just sitting in your home you know you cannot do anything just think of that. Mm. This is what happened to our people, Akhi. I see. So, so how did how did you get from there to the your 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 practice in Islam and so on? Of course, the Rohingyas are uh, naturally they are in fitra. They are toward upholding the religion. They practice Muslim. Okay. Generally, they are. Generally. Uh, okay. Is is a common uh, in, in known to be in, among the Rohingyas. I see. Okay, so my father is a religious teacher. Oh. Okay, so he was concerned about our bringing up Islamically. Okay, and also there is another interesting point is that when you go to in a school, for example, in like a country in Burma where discrimination is well spread, you find that you are upholding the deen is is very important for you. Then you otherwise you compromise with them. So your father teaching you how you uphold the religion. So it means you are not in comfort zone now here. You have to struggle from very beginning. Uh, so our upholding the deen start from the school in the KG level. Okay. Yeah, KG. I mean kindergarten level. Okay, okay, all right. I'm not familiar with that abbreviation. Yeah. Kindergarten. Okay. Yeah, Got kindergarten it. level. So right. you go there, you find the non-Muslim is there, and they discriminate you in a religious basis. Ah, okay. So, so you experienced you are, that, huh? So you experienced yes, racism I firsthand. That. So oh. I have to, I have come to know that I have to walk and struggle hard to uphold my faith. Ah. Oh. Okay. So I am no more from the very beginning in the comfort zone. Okay. So here, my effort come for upholding my religion. Hmm. So it's a continue until today. That's why I say it's reflecting until today. Oh, wow. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Do, do people generally think like this, uh, Brother Fari? Like uh, the, the, the racism that they face, that the hardship that they go through, and they feel like this is a struggle that, you know, that identity they need, need to continuously try to reinforce? Yeah, because uh, when the intellectual was there, they really thought that way. But it's, uh, gradually, they managed to finish the intellectual mind in our community. Oh. By blocking them from education, from economic status, and from position, politically, they are backward. So oh. by the time in 50, 60 years, they managed to implement their policy. Oh. But today, our people don't know what is mean freedom and some of them don't know what is your right. Right. Okay. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so how was that journey like for you, brother? Like uh, how, how did you uh, manage to say navigate around these uh, challenges? Uh, okay. Just make a summary, uh, he, uh, you know, in 1988, there is a student revelation to bring the democracy in the country. So after the revelation is over, then there are a lot of children, student leaders have to leave, flee from the country due to the military operation against them. So I had to leave the country at the age of nine years. Oh, okay. What year was this? Uh, is this 19? Uh, the revelation was actually 1988, but oh, I had to leave by 1990. Oh, I see. Mm. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's a, long, it's a long story, but it's a, to make short. Yep. A, yeah, this is what I know. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Then, and then where, where did that lead you to uh, when leaving at nine years old? Uh, of course, our closest border is, is Bangladesh, and this is a great way for us to go other countries. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Mashallah. So, so, yeah, tell us a bit about that journey, and about how you established and so on. By the way, I, 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 I lost my mother when, at the age of two years. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. So, I am from that time, I, I have very minimum times with my mother. I see. I see. By okay. I mean, so, it's main, main, mainly uh, being raised by your father then? Fathers, sisters, and grandfathers. Okay. Okay. I mean. 
Okay, okay. So, so how did that uh, that journey go out for you? Inshallah, like, like the, the the progress in terms of your Islamic passion in that one and so on. So my connection with my faith was not enough. Everywhere I go, I try to uh, increase my knowledge. If there is a formal education or is an informal education, okay. Start and everywhere I go, I try to continue. Mm. Okay, and that's how I uh, studied in this International Islamic University in Chittagong in Bangladesh. And then I oh. did a diploma under the supervision of the Jamiat al-Imam in Riyadh. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I did well. After this, is I continue my journey to Saudi Arabia. Oh, I see. Sure. Okay, so you started International Islamic University in Bangladesh, in Chittagong, and then you eventually continued to Saudi. Okay, so this passion for knowledge, is it something that you've always been uh, like raised with? Is it something that, uh, is it something that grew over time? Uh, I, I always connect my uh, bringing up in this point because my father was so concerned about to, to see their children, his children, to be religious. Oh, I see. So he did that passion. Is... Yeah, yeah, he was that. Um... Believe me, Brother Faisal, I remember, you know, the, our, our area is the, during the cold season. It's so cold, you know, in the morning. Uh, uh, to Even to touch the water is, is a difficult man of for you. But he never allowed us to not to go to the masjid for any reason. Oh. And later, seven or six years. Oh, oh, wow. I was struggling with my kid to take to the masjid. <laughs> Mashallah. I still remember sometimes I go to the masjid and I don't do the proper wudu because of it's so, you know, difficult to use the water. Yeah. Oh, mashallah. mashallah. But yet, he not allow us to stay home back. You must follow him. Wow. I wow. think it is a mark he lived with us. I think I'm going to remember his this step until I die. Mm, sure. That insistence to go to masjid even at that age. Yeah? Wow. That's actually a very important point for us as parents. Huh? Because uh, sometimes these small these, these experiences, they play an impact for the rest of their lives. Huh? It shapes their identity. Yeah? Mashallah. I, I don't know what it's called in English, but in Arabic called it naqshun, nukush, you know? Oh, you... When you do the naqsh in the child times, it will, it's unremovable. Yeah, it's imprinted. Yeah. yeah, it's imprinted. So this is very important for us to give any things valuable in the age. You know, Islam already has stated the age, 7 to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to instill within, within them, they will never forget. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. So that was an important driver for you as you were studying across uh, those years outside after you left your home country. Correct. And also the another thing is that I always thought of, I must serve my, my cause, my community, my faith oh. in my country. I must give back to them something. Oh, okay. So without developing myself, how am I going to contribute for them? Mm. This is another force that's always behind. If I not develop myself, how are you going to deliver to them anything? Uh, that's a good one. Mashallah. Take the ownership, take the responsibility, you yourself, and then channel it to the best means that you can. Yes, sure. Okay, mashallah, mashallah. So from there, so you were in Riyadh, huh? the, if I pick up. Makkah, actually, I go to Makkah straight. Oh, Makkah, oh, mashallah, mashallah. Oh, okay. So, so from there, how did, how did that gap happen? Like <laughs> from Riyadh, you're in Makkah, <laughs> and then uh, to, to start, yeah, how did that journey continue then? Okay, you know, the one you, any Muslims, I, I believe you as well, when you go to Makkah for the first time, yeah, you have totally different feeling and the rasa different, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was special. And uh, you was reading about the Quran, about the Sira. Suddenly you are there and it's a station. Yeah, true. Okay, yeah. This, you feel totally different thing. And you know, sometimes you, you feel that you are not deserved to walk in this place. It's so holiest that you are not deserved to walk here. You feel uh, the same feeling. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 true, true. Of course, the, throughout the journey, there is a, 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 a thing was always accompanying me. This is the identity I mentioned to you. Uh, if you don't have proper document, you can't do anything in this world. Oh, okay. Mm. That, that question is with us all the time, always in the journey. And this is created by created by our enemy, this Buddhist in the country. Mm. We go to Saudi Arabia, we go to Bangladesh, we go to India. You know, throughout the journey, you find this 
We call it in Arabic is la'na. This curse is with you all the time. Okay? The, the identity. You know, you want to walk, why is your identity? You want to apply for a job, why is your identity? You want to study, why is your identity? So documentation is a big problem for me in my progress. But Alhamdulillah, I overcome all these things. So I went to Saudi Arabia. I start working like others, any general work. Wherever I get the chance, I start working and not sitting. So first I start working as a clerk in a, in a, uh, in a construction company as a clerk or admin, I can say that. I see. Part-time. Okay. Then I start working uh, in Medina as a, you know, selling the clothes. Okay. The shop. Okay. During my this, and at the point, by the way, sometimes also I teach in a school, high school. I teach some oh. uh, limited subject. Yeah. Oh, okay. But when I went to Medina, I used to meet a lot of foreigners, Hajjaj, Maritamarin, so what, from different parts of the world. It's what happened is it, it, the, it, among the shopkeeper, I'm the one who can speak English only, the others only in Arabic. Ah. So, so, most, <laughs> okay, so most of the yeah most of the south african and england and nigerian people come to uh, our shop because mm. of i can communicate with them in english ah. <laughs> so commonly i i used to listen from them one question why i can get the islamic books in english why i can get the islamic books in english ah. when was this uh, brother this is, is in mid 90s was it no, okay. it's uh, 99, 2000. Oh, okay. Okay, that's yeah. quite recent actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, 99, uh, uh, 2000. Uh, oh. You can say end of 98 and 99 and 2000. Beginning of 2000. Oh. So, because we established Daokona in 2000. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. It's, it seems like you hit the ground running huh, after yeah. this. Uh... So, during my stay in Medina for about six months, I come across in the mind that if there's all these people asking about Islamic books in English, mean nobody doing the job here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I start searching now Islamic books in English, even though I read in Arabic. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I went throughout, and then I found the most of the Arabic books too, selling a corner, only 10 titles, 5 titles, 6 titles, and some don't know even what they're selling. Okay. This, is the, this is the reality in the ground. Mm. So from there I developed, I said, Allah brought me here not to sell the clothes. Uh -huh. I must do a job that connected to my bringing up. Right. But yeah, okay. Mashallah. Yeah, this is how I start thinking of the idea. Mm. So after that, uh, one day, I back to Mecca. By the way, I, I went back to Mecca. I will not, I'm not going to share with you. It was a terrible situation, by the way. <laughs> oh, is it? There's another another story behind it, is it? Yeah, it's, it's because you don't have documents, so the police catch you and send you to Jidda. Oh, <laughs> so it's uh, okay. yeah. So it's yeah, it's worth bearing in mind throughout this entire journey, you were still struggling with the lack of documentation. Identity, right? I told you. If you wanted to oh. finish up someone, just take his, his identity. Oh, subhanallah. 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 So, I end up my life suddenly in Jidda, from Jidda to Mecca again. Mm -hmm. Here, Alhamdulillah, the beginning start a different, different direction totally. What I was dreaming. Okay, you know that actually dream. Uh, there is a saying, dreams that you see in the sleep is not the dream. You know. <laughs> okay. Al hulm al ladi tarahu fi nomika laisa huwa al hulm al haqiqi. Al hulm al haqiqi. Who oh, are the Yamna Kamina no? Oh, okay. You know, I translate that first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the dream is that you see in the sleeping is not the dream. Dream that is a stop you from the sleeping is the real dream. Oh, yes. I like that. Subhanallah. Yes. Here is the thing start actually. I am dreaming to establish something connected to my faith in the center of faith. This is my oh, uh, center of faith. So I always, everywhere I go, I talk to my friends, I meet the people. My, this is my point of discussion. Mm. So I was telling my friend that. So one of my friends was working in Jeddah. His name is Yunus. May Allah bless him. He's still alive. 
Amen. So, so he came to know a brother. His name is Brother Ibrahim Al Harbi, who is alive now. Who is my partner and my sponsor and my one of the brilliant brother who took me to this journey. Oh. Okay, he have the already idea been established in Jeddah, but it's not in a scale international way. I see. The local okay. concept, but he is very much involved, mashallah, with uh, with many product in Jeddah. Only so, Ibrahim, so Ibrahim Al Harbi, he is local Mac Mac. He's a local man. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, so in the through my friends, I wanted to know him personally. So we have a discussion. We finally we found both of us in the same direction, looking for the same thing. Mashallah, Mashallah. So the problem of the documentation is over now. Even though I don't have identity, but I found a brother who have everything is ready. Ah, uh, Mashallah. Okay, Com so complement each other. Yes, Alhamdulillah. So he have something, I have something. We come together. That's why, Akhi, as alone we can't do anything. We can reach only very limited. Yeah. Yeah, miles. But together we reach the high, we reach the sky. Mm. Okay. Mashallah. So Brother, this, when you're saying this story, this reminds me of a hadith by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says like the, the, the souls are like soldiers. And you know, those that recognize each one another, they'll just instantly know each other. So if you have that same vision, that same dream, yeah. Allah will make the means to meet the people with your vision and make it happen, inshallah. So hey, this is what happened with us, inshallah. inshallah. Yeah, subhanAllah. So we come together and we put a our proper plan, what we're going to do for the next short plan, mid plan, and the, uh, you know, uh, as a usual for business. But one of the things we said is, is to promote the da'wah to the visitors of the Masjid Al-Haram from Mecca to the world. This was our, and by using high technology, that time we use that, you know, that, that time we think that highest technology, what is it? Mm. CD. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah, the yeah. early, early 2000s, yes, yes, yes. A yeah. oh, software, okay, that's, that's new at that time, software. okay, mashallah. Mm -hmm. new. So we start collecting the software and some books. I still remember, we start with about six softwares and 18 books. Oh. Wow. Our start, our journey began. Today we have 4,500 titles and software is no more exist anymore. <laughs> 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 I remember this, the software, I think I bought one when I was, I was doing Umrah, it's like a, it's a Quran, like it's a Quran software, right? If I'm not mistaken. I can tell you actually what you bought, you forgot about this, it's called yeah. software Tafid Al-Quran. Tafid Al-Quran? Yeah. Okay. It's produced by Harf Company. It's used to be one of the best software for translation and how to memorize the Quran. Oh, oh. yeah, it was a translation software, I do remember that, yes, yes, yes. We were, the, we were the exclusive uh, distributor for them in Mecca. Oh, mashallah. 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 So I, I really like that point that you said. So the vision was to promote the da'wah in the holy city. So the emphasis here is not to sell books, yeah. but no. it's to go beyond no, business, that. Always, always from in our journey, the business was secondary. Mm, mm. I love that. The vision is first. We have... A, Vision to deliver the mission, okay? Mm. To be Rasulu Rasulillah. To ah. be Rasulillah. Ah. The messenger of the messenger of Allah. Messenger of the messenger. Okay. So how good Shalom. is it if this happened from Makkah? That was so, so that was the establishment of the Dawah Corner, right? But did you still start at Hilton? Was that the already your first set establishment? Yeah. Oh wow. Can you repeat? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Uh, the the one that the common the, the, the common store that most of us uh get to know is the one in Hilton, right? Hilton Hotel, right? Yes, it's correct. So, so was that already the first establishment? The one this is the first establishment, yes. Oh, okay, mashallah. So you started off straight away there. I remember yeah. because back then, uh, my my the first time I went to Umrah with my parents was uh, two thousand actually, so I was uh, yeah I was uh, still in school. Um, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, yeah, there were not. I think Hilton was like the only like you can say high class. Shopping area, isn't it? Absolutely. So, you're right. You're right. This is right. the first modern concept uh, mall in Makkah. 
Ah, that's mm. right. Because previously it was all the traditional style like markets, marketplace, and COVID, there was no Zamzam, there was no other hotels, right? Uh, because you're asking this question, I can give you tips who are looking for business. You know, your location is very important. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Don't undermine your location because of the price. Ah, good one. Ah, okay. Yeah, you can pay a high <laughs> rent for a good location. Yeah. And you yeah. pay a very minimum rent, but it's not good location. Ah, good one. Uh, you know that our location was so strategic. Uh, no one actually can hide from me. You know that how it is? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the place I see, I can see everyone go down and come up. Oh, uh, so brother Faisal visiting Mecca, you want to hide from me? No, no, you cannot. Hide. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember fact, that the location was superb. It's like because I, I think it was like in in Hilton. And I, I think you go up the escalator, that's the first shop you see. It's the see, fast, right? fast main escalator. Yeah. Okay, when you go up, you turn, you see the fast. You yeah. go down, you see the fast. Ah, that's right. Mm. You go down, you see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I used to say to my some of my friends, Yeah. you see, if you come to visit Mecca and you not full, visit us, your Umrah is not accepted. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> 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 Mashallah. <laughs> So, uh, brother, I just want—I'm just curious. Like, so, you're saying like to, to spend more. So, this kind of like an that the kind of long-term investment mindset. You always had that, is it? Like, did you have a mentor like to advise you like this business strategies, like to location, spend more, it's okay, these kind of things? Uh, uh, is it something like this? I can share with you. Uh, we know uh, as a human, we are the best creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, we all the human believe that we are the best creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A best creation must be deliver best, correct? Yeah. You, yeah. you have to think always the best. And when the, every single human go separately with her, himself or herself, they find she is the be- most beautiful, he is the most, uh, okay? This is how the human think. Right. Okay. So in this concept, I always used to believe that I, if I start something, I have to go to the best of that industry. Oh, the best of this okay. profession. Not okay. just you start selling books in Mecca and finish up there. Right. Because industry is not end up there. Industry have more to achieve. MashaAllah. Right. MashaAllah. Okay. If that's talking about the dawa, dawa is not only selling books. Okay. Now you, you learn how to make dawa through book. But there is many other methods, other asalib the means wasail that you can deliver the dawah, which is also connected to your existing business. Mm. So I start thinking that way and I start developing my relationship with the people who are playing role in this area, local and international. So I have uh, established relationship with many mashayikh around from around the world, especially mm. those uh, students of knowledge in Medina Manora mm. and the scholars who are visiting and also some oh, of the du'at, local du'at, uh, and the Dawa cooperative offices that established by Kim Fahad, Allah Yerhamu. That time, you know, it was the peak of the Dawa activities in Saudi Arabia. Sheikh Ibn Baz is there, Sheikh Uthameen is there, mashallah. At the other hand, is Sheikh Alban is there. Mm. Dawa was is so super. Mm. So this, was, are, this was the early 2000s, right? Yes. So you are in an area that now you are enjoying the uh, atmosphere that is going around. So you wanted to be a product of that uh, generation. Okay. Yeah, so we thought of that way and we always think that we can deliver much more than books too. Mm, sure. so one thing we did, it was the beyond traditional way of doing the books too. People think that what the supplier supply to me and I'm going to sell it, that is enough. Yeah, that's what most people think. Yeah, yeah no, we didn't that way. We thought different, with totally different strategy. Hmm. First of all, we did five things, Sahih. Or I can say is that distinguish us from other traditional books is the five things I can go that way. Wow. Yeah. First of all, if you need to be a known brand, you have to create an specialty for you. Specialty. A specialty. What your specialty in what form? Mm, your niche so, in this area. Yes. Number one, I said, okay, we are not an Arabic bookstore. Oh. We are a multi-language Islamic bookstore. Mm. Mm. Mashallah. Okay. 
So we start collecting all the material translated to English and other languages. Mm. So within the short time, we become the references for the ministries for the translated books. Oh, oh mashallah. mashallah. Okay. It's not only okay. English. So we don't have a single Arabic titles, but we have 70 other languages. <laughs> wow, mashallah, mashallah. Okay, this is one. Number two, when we're choosing the titles to be in our shelf, we set a criteria of few things. Number one is must be authentic, oh, okay. approved by the mashayikh or by a known center and, and, and beyond like this. Mm. Number three is must be quality in terms of printing and the paper binding is must be quality because Islamic work must be quality. Islam is the super religion. All things that invite into Islam must be super. Oh, mm, mashallah, absolutely, 100%. Okay, so I thought about that. Uh, I think the, I thought about the, the, the speciality and then we have the authenticity and also the quality. And we tried also to make it affordable for the people in terms of price. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, this is also we try to consider. Okay. And then lately, we try to maintain our sincerity for our job. Oh, okay. Okay. Sincerity in our job is, is well, here we're not talking about, you know, to promote our sincerity for the public. No, at all. No. Yeah. But people always think the sincerity is connected to only religious matter. Oh. No, sincerity in your work as well. Michelle, yeah. You know, how you, uh, as a, you doing a job, you are staff in a company working, how are mm. you going to be sincere to, loyal to your company? Your loyalty to your company is a sincerity, actually. Mm. If you are okay. working for eight hours, did you spend eight hours for the sake of the job task given to you? Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. As a, we are, as a, the, uh, the company owner or as a power corner, uh, the manager, did I doing what's supposed to be done for the sake of to develop this place? So we did all the necessary actions to develop this place. Right, right. You know, I remember once uh, a, a, a sheikh, I forgot the name, said, you know, the sincerity is so important, even a rover can, can win his robbery in his robbery if he's sincere. Oh, even a robber can, yes. even a thief can yes. be successful yes. if he's yes, sincere. Yes. Oh. But if he's not sincere, he don't do the proper essential plan to be done, mm -hmm. he can be failed, he can be cashed. Uh, so, so I have to ask, brother, so sincere in this context sort of means like commitment, is it? Like loyalty in that yeah. sense. To uh. fulfill the requirement of that job, a task that's given to you. Ah, uh, the dedication, right? Yeah. Okay. No, okay. it's beyond dedication, Akhi. Or beyond that, full, yeah, fulfillment of the all requirements, the task given to you. Uh, so okay. your boss is in front of you or not? Did you do uh, that? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mashallah. One is come to you, customers. Oh, so I think these you differentiate five, between sorry. the customer uh, who is rich and who is poor, the one buying five ringgit and the, the one buying ten ringgit. You did in the same level of service or not? Mm. Oh, that's a really good mm. point. Do you discriminate just because they are high paying? Sometimes what, we right? do it uh, unintentionally, but it's happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have these Don't biases. Buy more, you give the attention more. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. human beings, right? We have these biases, right? If they have a nice thaub and a good perfume, <laughs> mashallah, this will probably be a good <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. customer, right? You have to be sincere. And another one is, of course, you have to be sincere to your objective. Why are you doing this job? Uh, okay. Yeah, you are. Uh, addressing the sincerity toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make mm. me sincerely for the sake of Allah. So okay. you get the rewards in this world, you get the rewards for Akhirah, both. Mm. Inshallah. Inshallah. Brother, you mentioned five points. So specialty, authenticity, quality, affordability. And you mentioned the fifth point, sincerity. I think you said like, it's something that's recently what do you mean by recently? Is it something like uh, something happened or if you just realize that, oh, we, we've been missing this, this element? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, you didn't say that? Okay, maybe I picked it up wrongly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, sorry about that. Oh, so actually, the five criteria you you said um, was, I think it the unique selling point hit us. <laughs> I, when when I think about Tower of Corner, that's exactly what I I've been thinking. Um, I want, if I want to search a translation of uh, any any scholar's book, I would go to the Awa bookstore, <laughs> not any other place. <laughs> first, be honest. Uh, uh, let me share with you something. You know, I was looking for some books. Yep. Wallah, he's ten years to bring to our shelf. Wow, mm, ten years. Wow. Do, do you believe that ten years it took me to bring that book to our shelf? Oh, why, why is it? it? Yeah. Oh, Subhanallah. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, if I give you an example of the book, Risalat Imam al-Shafi'i. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Fil Fiqh. Yep. This book been published by only non-Muslim publisher all the time. Oh, really? Oh, okay. And the most of the time, it is from Europe. Okay. Okay. Before the de- uh, development of this Amazon culture, you know, the mm-hmm. shipping here and there, yeah. it is so difficult to communicate with this publisher Oh, and they are they are always appointed an exclusive distributor in your region. Okay. So whenever you write to them, they direct to you the exclusive this distributor. Then you write to distributor, they will say it's not in a stock. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so you always have dead ends yeah. when it comes to always okay. this those distributor is a non-Muslim distributor. They don't know about Islamic value and Islamic book, mm. or they not take interest to bring these books in quantity. Okay, and the prices mm. was so high. Mm. So, you know, I just give an example. Is there many other books is like this? Uh. Let me share with you another book. It's recently. It's, mm. It took me three years. It's coming next week, inshallah, to our two. Next week. Oh. Okay. <laughs> or next right. week. Preview, next preview. Week, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, great. Uh, you know the the Madarij Salikin. Ah, you know, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, one yeah, of the man. one of the super book. Oh like yeah, my Nobel scholar, Ibn yeah. Rahmatullah It's been translated by one doctor and Jung by a publisher, who is the publisher in in America, I think in UK, the Braille publisher. Oh, Braille. Braille, okay. And they put the price. Ahi is end up to Malaysia nine hundred ringgit. Nine hundred oh, ringgit. Wow. Oh. Okay. While these Arabic books. It's only 80 ringgit. Oh, for real? <laughs> okay. in, in Indonesia, maybe 150 ringgit in two volumes. Ah. Okay? Subhanallah, this book, I try it and I go with them to make it cheaper. And you know, I said that Asia is not affordable with that price. Please, I cannot reach to any point. Ahi. Finally, I decided even 900, I'm going to bring the books to our store. Mm. So sometime our job, is to make the book is only available, not to make money out of money. it. Okay. Mm. So not is it not an easy task, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah. Actually, it's now that you mentioned that uh, the point of money, right? It, it, I mean, we did cross my mind as well, because uh, uh, people have this perception, like to start a a bookstore these days in this day and age people don't really read right that's the common perception that people have so it's kind of a, a very difficult venture to be in did you have that kind of uh, uh, thoughts I, going in i always say that uh, if you wanted to make money out of books please don't join us <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but if you love book mm. please come on board mm. okay uh, Masha'Allah. Okay. But if you love, if you wanted to do Islamic book, I always give one idea. If you don't have missionary thoughts, please don't do it. Ah, uh, you need to have that high vision. Yeah. Okay. If, if you don't feel that, it's only you t- doing Islamic book business because in Malaysia, for example, in Makkah, many Muslims, they will buy their books and make out of this money. Mm-hmm. If only because of this Objective, you cannot enjoy. You don't enjoy. Uh, okay. You will really enjoy the book business if mm. you have two together. I'm going to work for my faith and out of that, I'm going to live my life. Mashallah. Mm, mashallah. Okay? Yeah. You know, so let me give you some uh, idea, uh, some uh, story of what happened. 
Yeah. Sometimes I see the book cover is enough for me to make the whole day is happy. Awesome. Oh, oh. okay. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I bring a title in a one year. This is enough for whole year to enjoy. Mashallah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Okay, mashallah. Uh, that's why I, I always say that, uh, uh, brother. I wonder, you know that I have a lot of question. This how can I establish in the uh, Dawa corner in my country? It's a question always been from Africa, from here and oh, there. Oh, people ask you that, huh? Okay. From others, from, okay, okay. But anyway, we share our idea. We managed to establish in few countries already, alhamdulillah. Even though it's not our country, but the same concept, same methodology being applied in almost seven countries now. I see. I shall, uh, and I'm yeah, using 100% the devil. supporting them with the materials and the concept and the ideas and materials. Oh, mashallah. Oh, okay. great. Mashallah. So I, I always tell them one thing, Akhi. You know, it's a bit funny, but excuse me, please. I say, if you want to die book, dream book, eat book, sleep book, <laughs> then please do it. Otherwise, don't. Uh, you need to have that genuine passion for it, huh? Because I, I know what I'm talking about. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if choose the book as a means between him and his messenger. Mm. See there, how many... In Muslim faith, we believe, I think the other faith as well, yeah. that the four book, four known books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed through the Jibreel alayhi salam, is all of them called book, akhi. <laughs> True. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allah the Almighty choose book as a means for him. MashaAllah. Yeah, he can just, you know, the talk to the uh, uh, messengers and deliver is finished over. But it's not that. He used book as a means. The second thing is not only that. The only thing that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed for preservation until the day of judgment is book. Wow. That's a good point. Inshallah. Okay. You see the Quran. Mm. It's book. Not individual personality. No. Even message is going to be interrupted and corrupted. Mm. You know, a lot of false message about Islam will be spread around the world. Mm. al kidib you know, the, before the Qiyamah, is al kidib is going to be mm. uh, spreading as like, you know, in a huge way, mm. what happening today. Mm. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed us that he's going to preserve his book. Mm. Okay? And then number three, Akhi, it says, when Allah emphasizes on something very great, then He give qasam, He take qasam with that particular thing. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Among them, Allah mentioned, Allah emphasized subhanahu wa ta'ala in many things. Among them is His pen. Ah, uh, okay. Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. And it's not in a, uh, only not say the qalam, Omar Yasturun and what is writing. Oh, uh, what is written. Oh, okay. Okay. What is writing? Okay. Yes. So oh, all this showing that the Muslims are really encouraged to read and and uh, and uh, read the book is not book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Mm. You cannot increase your knowledge without reading. Mm. And the, from the ancient times, we found that the Muslims have uh, or had contributed into this industry of the printing, books, publishing, binding, greatly, greatly. If you wanted to go see and read a book, mm. by the House, House of Wisdom, 1001 invention by Muslims. So they greatly they contributed to this industry, even mm. though today we are is so much back yeah. in the line. Right. But it's not mean that we are at the back continue. Inshallah, we're going to front again. Don't worry. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the takeaway points I got from this is the idea of ulul hima having high aspirations. So the idea is the high aspiration here is dawa, and the the best. Uh, so so the books are the medium for us to get to that means. And so we always have that, that thinking in mind. Yeah. So that was the one that will have give us that passion to keep sustaining and keep improving ourselves and striving for the best. Correct, correct. They say that the book is a friend. They never, uh, what? Uh, never humiliate you. 
and, okay. and, and, and it will make you angry. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Okay, and also the about the book is is a, is, a, is is a home for the one no home. You know, like me mm. who have no home, book is my home. Oh, you can find comfort in the books, yeah. And also, <laughs> is, and also the book is a friend for those no friend. Oh, mashallah. Okay. Inshallah. And it's not only that the book is provision for the one who have no provision to go and see the wall. Mm, yeah. Mashallah. Okay. You read the book at home and you fly over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mashallah. I love that point. So okay, I'm just curious, like uh, this this passion towards reading in general for you, is it always been something that you've grown up with or is it something that grew with you over time? Uh, you know, there's sometimes your situation lead you to read. Right. And also, uh, you are objective in the life to lead you to read as well. Ah, okay. 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 If I wanted to be uh, a special one in my area, in my industry, my profession, what can, how can this happen without reading? Let's say, take a student without reading. How can be he? <laughs> You know, the, the best in the class. Yeah. You cannot excel. Even a teacher, how can be best teacher in the school without reading? Okay? Yeah. Similarly, how can be a good Muslim without knowing things? Mm. So the, the more you know, the more you can deliver. Mm. So it is always connected to your profession. Right. Unless you enter to choose to be, uh, you know, with those out there, then you choose not reading. Lah. It's okay. Mm. Okay. So. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the people say, okay, uh, uh, you know, it's a concept actually the, from the zoo. Oh, this wall I don't need. This is enough what I have. Okay. So I'm not going to do the Excel in my worldly thing. I'm going to do the Excel only. Akhirah. Uh, my uh, uh, my religious affairs, which is totally against the concept developed by Islam, the introduced by the Prophet You see, in the first very beginning, Allah talking about the perfection of iman al falah, success in the life. Among the among those people who succeeding in their both life, they are going to expand in the feasibility. How are you going to spend if you don't have anything? Mm, yeah. So there is a lot of highest status in Islam. You cannot achieve it without the mal. Mm, yeah. birra hatta mm. And also, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever come to the great matters in Islam, mention the amwal before the amfus. Mention the wealth before the nafs. Okay? Yeah, uh, like a verse in the Surah to Saf. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 he will simply say, I will join with myself. Brother, we need some fun for that project. I'm sorry, I don't have anything to tell you. Yeah. Because people back hold themselves when it's come to the spending feasibility. Mm. And there is a great project will never help happen without the money. So Ummah require this concept of wealth, Akhi. Mm. So that's why Allah keeps some in the Jannah, some position is only for the Sahi, not for the Bakhil. Because Sahi only come through the wealth. We, we can translate that, brother. Sahi and Bakhil, but the generosity. Okay. Yeah. For the generous one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Mm. So, so, so yeah, coming back to that point, so for you personally, it was uh, the, the, the passion for books and reading was developed because of the identity that you established as a Muslim. You feel like, you feel that, right? Okay, mashallah. Uh, speaking about that, so maybe can you share some tips with uh, what we are struggling with? What I hear a lot is that people are saying like, oh, my, I, just, I just can't find time to read. You know, it's just so difficult to make time to read. So maybe, brother, can you share with us some uh, tips and some advice? Uh, how can our listeners out there, you know, start this habit? You know, like we are struggling to find time to read. So where, where do we start? Uh, you know, there's a various kinds of the reading, isn't it? Uh, you know, some reading is, is for fundamentals. You must read it. And some... Uh, you just uh, you need for a short while and then we, you don't have to read it, no, no need to continue. And some for not both reasons, just read it. So when you fixing yourself to read in a specific book in a specific time, I think it's quite difficult. Okay, okay. Yeah. But if you, okay, you choose for you fundamental reading that is in a specific time, in a week maybe 30, 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm. But for others, you just keep a book next to your bed. Mm. Okay. Right. Uh, by the way, I'm going to share with you. I have a child. Or I, I say I have two child that, that now allow you to sleep without reading for them at least five books. Five books. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. I feel so sad sometimes I have to off light because it is already late night. <laughs> Mashallah. Yet they're crying. You're not completed the job to do. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> you, you know, some of them, they say, the book I read for them actually is re- many times I read, still they wanted to read the same thing. Yeah. Ah, yep, yep, yeah, I, I can it. relate to that. Mm, yeah. I can relate to that. So. Yeah. yeah, so what I, th- I say to my wife, this is a very, very good culture we can develop within them and they will continue afterward. Ah, so, geez, okay, take this as a challenge and be patient and do our best. Do not stop them from doing this. Okay. Okay. So I, we have to find out in a way of. By the way, sometimes the book is nothing. Allah, he is not Islamic book. Mm. Oh, just casual reading, right? Uh, he, he's talking about dinosaur. I do. What <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. And so most of the time, it's about the color, haywan in the sea, yeah, in yeah. the sea and kinds of things. I see. Uh, I have a son also. He loved the Prophet Yunus because he loved the way. Ah, oh, mashallah. Okay. He said, yeah. I, the Prophet Yunus is my friend. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. And, and also I did another thing. I think I can share with the, the brothers and sisters here. You know, every home have its budget for spending, isn't it? Yes. So according to your income, you have a budget. How much are you going to spend? Am I right? Yeah. But I told my wives that, okay, for everything is budget, except if the children wanted to buy a book, there is no budget. Ah, <laughs> oh, mashallah. Okay. Mashallah. Yeah. And uh, the last tip in this regards, I can share with you. I think every home require to develop a library. How small is it? Doesn't matter. Okay. So the library behind me, behind you see behind me yeah, is our actually house library. Oh. The ground floor, a room we design designated only for books. Mashallah. Mm. So what we do Mashallah. whenever we wanted to talk for nothing is we just come and sit here. Floor. <laughs> <laughs> no chair here, by the way, is a carpet. Oh floor, okay. Arab style. We sit oh. here. You know, while we sit talking, the children making the messy, all the books they take down to oh. Okay. And then you have to fix it, arrange it again and again every day. Uh. When we establishing this uh, library at home, I told my wife, let the children do the concept and buy the things according to the need. Uh, what color, okay. what carpet, what uh, size. Give them the freedom. Okay. Some mm. of the, I, I received some complaint from moms. They say, this is expensive and this is that. I said, never mind, it's on me. Just do it. Ah, uh, okay. So they feel connected to that shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have some ownership in it. Kids like that, right? Like if they yeah. have a choice in something, they choose what? that. Yes. Yeah, I own it, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is mine. So I think this is a very, very important thing to do in every home. How small does it matter? Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. 
So build a library and let the kids take part in how they want to design the library yeah. and allow them the freedom to make a mess. Just yes. live with it. Uh, Please like, do that. They're going to make a mess with their toys anyway, right? So oh, every well, day, I'm, no problem. I'm going to fix everything. <laughs> MashaAllah. <laughs> this is really good, MashaAllah. So it becomes like a recreation for them. And I mean, this is a, much better. The kids have to get, I mean, kids these days are attached to gadgets and digital things anyway. Might as well create the, op, the, the alternative of books, right? Yeah, yeah. Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. Yeah, I can relate to that. Uh, he, uh, my, my son, four-year-old, Muawiyah, he's just telling me to read the same books again and again and again. So I just tell myself, to remind myself, be patient. At least he, he loves books, right? He, it's not he asking for some nonsense stuff. I remember we have this Quran book and it's, uh, he always says, uh, I want the elephant surah. <laughs> Because that book has this like pictures about birds and he loves to see like the imagery of birds and stones and elephants and army and like, oh, he loves the epic stuff. Story, you know, mashallah. So, oh, yeah. You know, this is my son, the, the Urbada, the one I'm talking about. He loved the Prophet Yunus. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. The the one means his uh, nene, one, his, his grandmother. Ah, his grandmother, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, read the verses of the Surah Yunus, play for him Surah Yunus after I finish the story. And he memorized in the middle of the Quran those ayah, those verses Masha related Allah. to the Yunus. Allah. Wow. Wow. Totally unknowingly, totally not planned. Ah, oh, mashallah. Wow, yeah, yeah. So much barakah when you have that continuous going. Because, yeah, you actually don't know what your children pick up, isn't it? Like, you don't know okay. what resonates with them. And suddenly one day, you're just playing around and they just say something like, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> so, mashallah. Of all, I mean, the worst thing is you, you get language that you don't want. But the best case is, mashallah, you get something like this. Like, oh, they mentioned right. something from Quran. Mashallah. <laughs> mashallah. Brother, maybe picking up a little bit where we left up just now. So, how did you end up in Malaysia, actually? So, that was from in Makkah, right? A lot of people were saying that I love my wife. That's why I came here. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that could be one assumption. <laughs> I'm married to my Malaysian wife. It's later, actually. I come first here. Okay. You know, the while I'm practicing the, this business in, Malay, in, in Makkah, yeah. of course, uh, you know, I have built relationship with many people from all over the world. Among them is many Malaysians. I was so impressed with knowing some Malaysian brothers. Oh. And it's not only the, uh, the selected brother, actually, in generally, by knowing many Malaysians. Okay? You know, the people here may say the Malaysian are doing great, isn't it? <laughs> Correct? Yeah, people generally say that, yeah. In the beginning, in Makkah, I feel the same. Oh, I see. 2001, 2003, 2004, I was feeling the same Malaysians are uh, uh, lazy to read the book. Right. I was feeling the same. I see. Subhanallah, suddenly I don't know what happened, what changes make the government or individuals. I don't know what happened. Okay. It's 2004 onward, in our record in Dawa Kona, Malaysian become number two uh, as a book buyer. Wow. Otherwise, a reader. Okay? So, it is jump within the four years. Mm. So, from here, I started the idea of, uh, uh, you know, I think this, I always think, Ahi, if I establish uh, the same concept, I was thinking of a few uh, uh, pointed uh, things. Number one, a country that must be stable politically. Mm. Okay? Fair and a country also, there is a, some stability economy. Okay? Mm. Yep. At the same time, there is a reading culture. This is growing. As well as uh, opportunity to do da'wah is not much obstacle like other countries. Oh, okay. Not so much obstacles for that one. Yeah. So all this thing I put in mindset. So I start building my relationship with the Malaysians. Alhamdulillah, I come with across many good brothers. If namely, I can give you hundreds names, Sahi. You know, some of them uh, university professors and some of du'at and some of student of knowledge. 
and some general brothers and sisters, they asked me, please come and do this job in Malaysia. We need this kinds of thing. Okay. I see. So, uh, namely, I can mention a few brothers. Uh, uh, the, my brother, is, is, I have to say my brother, Dr. Ismail Umar mm. uh, from Qibla. Mm. Uh, brother Ahmad Sudikin from the Set Publications. And uh, there is another Dr. Tajuddin. Okay. And then, uh, namely, to mention, and Sheikh Hussein E. In that times. Mashallah, many other brothers. Uh, the brother, Iraqi brother, was living in Malaysia. His name is Amin. Alhamdulillah, those brothers encouraged me, please come and help, you know, come here. We need these kinds of books too in Malaysia. Mm. So first time I decided to visit Malaysia. Oh, okay. In 2006 to study the case, okay? Okay. By the way, whenever I do something, I do very proper study first. Okay. So, so yeah. I go personally and study the things from all dimension. Then I decide. Okay. So 2006, I came to Malaysia for the first time. I stayed one month and I went around. I visited all the Islamic bookstore, Islamic organization. I have noted their challenges and their possibilities, all of them. Okay. And also I thought of what I can do beyond only bookstore. Ah, okay. Yeah, what other things I can bring to this industry? Okay, then uh, Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in 2008, after studying two years, I decided to open in Malaysia, the first branch. Mm. In 2008. 2008, yeah, I remember that. 2008, yes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I have, in the beginning, it was quite a mix, uh, uh, what do you call is it? Uh, reactions. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's some negative and some positive, some challenges here and there. I don't want to mention all. Oh, I see. Finally, Alhamdulillah, we overcome, uh, you know, the uh, and we are here today. Okay. Uh, you know, as a, as, as a, there is a, in Arabic, there is a, a, a shayr say, إِذَا, إذا طَمَحَدْ لِلْحَيَاةِ النُّفُوسُ لَا بُدَّانِ يَسْتَجِيبُ الْقَدْرُ Okay? إِذَا مَا طَمَحْتُ إِلَى غَارِيَةٍ so it is mean that for a worthy and noble existence, the fate will accordingly respond. My goals, once I have set it and put aside all cautions. You know, so this is a, a very uh, inspiring saying that is one shire of uh, Arabia, they said once. This is what exactly how it happened to us. When I set the goal, I work for it hard. And until we achieved it, Alhamdulillah. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Until 2009, we were only bookstore. We not start publishing. Ah, uh, okay. That's a good point. Okay. Right. You know, when you are in a bookstore, the next step is actually publishing. Okay. Am I right? As a bookseller, of course, the books is your product. Either yeah. you publish or you bring from other people. Throughout the, our working experience, we came to know that there is a lot of area in Islamic sciences been not addressed well by, oh, okay. by many publishers. Okay. So, and the many requests from the audience or from the readers, they're asking for some titles, but we can't find is anywhere. Oh, what are, what are some of these Islamic sciences brother, that you saw back then that was still lacking? That was still... For example, let's say there's some modern issues that appear in the, in the Ummah. Ah, modern issues, okay. Some publishers, they don't want to address these issues. Mm. Or they don't take uh, as, a, as a part of their delivery to that to highlight that particular issue. Okay, that's a good point. Is, is one. Secondly, even Islamic traditional sciences also, sometimes, you know, it's a huge knowledge, Akhi. You do one, two, three publishers to address the whole thing, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, a lot of people need to involve. Yeah. Mm. So we come, uh, we make a decision that we must address uh, by publishing some of the matters. Because mm. you have already a uh, customer base and you already came to know the problems that the, our Muslim Ummah is facing. And then you are capable to address the uh, matters as well as you have the contact with the, those qualified authors. Ah, okay. All these elements lead us to 
become publisher. I see, I see. But this is the publishing experience is very horrible actually. Oh. <laughs> you okay. know, the, uh, to be honest, first few publications of ours, we just print it and burn it. Burn it. <laughs> oh. Uh, Was that intentional? Because you plan the product to be good as a content, as a quality, as I mentioned, is authentic in language, quality in printing and language, and it's look good and it's compete with the market quality. But subhanAllah, because you have like experience, is something come you don't please with yourself. Oh, I see, I see. So, so you, after you we receive and we pay to the publisher and printer and author, yeah, take the book and burn it. Wow. Wow. Not that, once, it's twice, Akhi. Wow. So you're that unhappy with the quality. Even you yourself, you felt that it was not up to your but standards. I, yeah, I always say to my team, this is the, our graduation to be publisher. Ah, we right. really, really, really enjoyed that experience of fail. Right. Failure. That failure was an important yeah. lesson for you, mashallah. Yeah. So enjoy your failure, Akhi, to go to the next stage. Ah, it's a really good one. Yeah. If you okay. cannot enjoy your failure, you can't go to a step next. MashaAllah, such an important point. This is what happened exactly with Dawakona. I also remember in the earliest few books of Dawakona, published by Dawakona, when we offered to some bookstores, I remember the mock and the love, and they rejected to sell the books in their shelf. They rejected to sell yeah. Dawakona books. You say, what kind of book is it? It's not qualified, you know. It's not English, it's not qualified, it's not look nice. Wow. Yeah. Subhanallah, today, those brothers are our main customers. <laughs> MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbalah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. But we take their command. They are, I still say that they are our teachers. We learn from them a lot. Okay. Yeah. But we not copied them. We innovated the new ideas. Mm. Okay. So if we copy the, their ideas, we become another one of them. Okay, it's a good point. Okay, but here we created our own ideas by learning from their existing experience. Mm. Leverage from the experience without copying them. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. Well, alhamdulillah, today our books is in their store without any request. Alhamdulillah. Ah, mashallah. Oh, you don't have to request them to send. Alhamdulillah, they, are, they say, please, you have any books? 500 co copy for me. Mashallah, <laughs> mashallah. There are a lot of takeaway points that I got from this brother. So, mashallah, if Allah gives you the means to do it, if you know there's a, a need for it, then don't procrastinate. Go for it, right? I think that's one of the takeaway points I got from this. Yes. Because Allah gave you the means to do it. Allah, so you have a responsibility to step up. That's one of the, Yes, it, it might be difficult. You might be facing failure. Yeah. So, mashallah. So, I think that was another takeaway point that I got. Like, use these failures as a, like, to fuel your experiences because that's what... That's what I, actually, in a way, that's the price to pay. Anything you want to reach in life, right? That was, there's always something that you have to go through. Correct. And so, mashallah, it's nice to hear this from you. Yeah, mashallah. Right. So, so where do you uh, where do you go from there? Like, so uh, after this uh, experience, actually, brother, I do recall one of the earliest books. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but when the earlier years of the publishing experience from Dawah Corner, the earlier books a lot of focus on the heart, right? If I'm not yes, mistaken. Uh, yes, correct, correct. Yeah, um, I remember the, the translation of essay from Ibn Taymiyyah about the heart. There was a book about purification of the heart. There was a yes. yes. A, you even had publication of Enjoy Your Life from uh, Dr. Muhammad Arifi, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, Dr. Arifi is not ours. Oh, that, that, that was uh, Darussalam, right, right, right. Okay. But you mentioned two books, it's the earliest books of ours. It's on the heart as well as the... Uh, the uh, it's not purification of the heart, by the way, we changed the ritual of worshipping heart, but it, is, it was not the same title, it was another title. You know, let me share with you an experience of a book, okay? I mentioned many books, isn't it? Yeah. Many people say to you, this is a, uh, I think it's a known to everyone, said, don't judge the book by its cover. Am I right? Yeah, that's a common phrase. Today, we are came to know that theory is not correct. 
33.9% people will judge the book by its cover. Ah, okay. okay. I'm giving you a percentage, Akhiya. Yeah? <laughs> sorry, 33.33. If you, if you go to the 100%, isn't it? Okay, one third. You will judge okay. the book by its cover. Another 33.3 will judge the book by its author. Oh. Okay. Another 33.3 will judge the book by its content. Okay. Okay. So content but by it, itself is only one third of the story. That's the lesson. Uh, by the way, all these things can be fed if there is another thing is not fulfilled, connected to quality. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. We publish a book, if you recall, Ahi, it's called The Forsake Grief and Start Living. Forsake Grief and Start Living. Forsake Grief and Start Living. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The book. Okay. That when we choose the title for this book, I consulted a, a, a very known chef of ours. I said, Sheikh, what, to what the title to give for this book? Because in Arabic, it's called Da'il Huzn wa Da'il Haya. This is the title. Oh, okay. Right. And I asked the sheikh, uh, you know, I tried to use the translation in many different ways. Then mm. I asked him, what is the translation? I mean, the good title should be. Mm. Then the sheikh gave us this title, the one I mentioned, for say, grief and study. Mm. We published, we printed about 2,000 copies of this book. It took four years to sell this 2,000. I see. Wow. We came to know that is the only reason that the title was not suitable for the targeted audience. Oh. Okay. Same book after four years. We only changed the titles. Right. Every year we print 6,000 books in every year. <laughs> wow, that's a big change. Example. Oh, only. Wow. Continuously last 10 years. What do you think? Wow. Mashallah. Only title. Oh. You know, sometimes that's why there is a between, clash between the publishers and the authors in yeah. choosing the titles because yeah, they speak yeah. only their book, but we see different other elements. Right, right. Good point. Yes. Mashallah. Yeah. So, what was the title revised to then? So, the, the first title was Forsake Grief and Start Living. Stop Worrying and Start Living. <laughs> Stop Worrying and Start Living. Mashallah. Yes. Oh, I have Actually, the book. <laughs> Yes, I have the books behind. <laughs> so if you oh. read, if you're willing to write a book in your life, please come to me before you give title. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. And this is, there's a book by Dale Carnegie, right? Similar title, yes. right? Yes, yes, yeah. similar titles. Yes. Mm, okay, so but this one. Ah, okay, okay. Mashallah, mashallah. Wow, this is really awesome. So I'm just sharing an experience that is what exactly is happened with us. Mm, mashallah. Yeah, I'm happy to see that like the, the efforts are continuously expanding. And yeah, actually, I, I do observe that there's a consistent commitment to quality. Mashallah. Allah mabarak. So the, when we came to publishing and we start knowing the, uh, uh, gaining the experience, we think we put the thing as in the stage, not in rushing to bring many titles in one year. No. First uh, year, uh, we only looking for three titles in a year. Okay. So we, we increase to six titles in a year. Okay. And we move and we include the first two category only. After that, we add another category. Uh, at the moment now, we are talking, we are uh, working in the sixth category. Okay. And the 24 books per year. This is our limitation now today. 24 books per year? Per year. New title and reprinting all our 125 titles is the reprinting, but the new titles to be added in our catalog is 24, the max. I see, I see. Wow, 24, that's not like a lot though, brother, to be honest. But to be honest, some publishers bring in a one month two or 24. I see, wow, okay, okay. That's interesting to know, I mean, from, from, a, from a reader's perspective, we, <laughs> we cannot tell, but mashallah, it's nice to know these facts. So how did you move from there to uh, like where we sit right now? Like uh, maybe the, the straight path and inviting Mufti Mank. Was that like a natural progression? It sounds like a completely different deal for you. Isn't it? <laughs> you know, the, I always say that your, your capital is your interaction with the people. How you interact with the people is your capital. 
and how you build trust with the people is your capital. Your capital is not money. Many people believe capital is the money that in your account. Mm. I always thought of different way. I never have capital. I see. Yeah, my capital was always is uh, interaction, relationship with the people. Okay. Yes. So as I mentioned, is throughout the story, I developed with this, my my relationship with many speakers, many writers, and and also I attended myself with many courses and classes here, and sometimes we collaborate with them and also we supported them with the materials. I see. Okay. So then by that we come to know that in this field, uh, this field also, we can contribute. Okay. This is how we came to the uh, uh, organizing the talks. It's not copying. Uh. It's not copying the another organization's idea. Rather, is we found our way of our role to contribute in the in the same industry. Mm, you found your role, okay? Uh, so uh, I came to know one of my best friends is Haji Muhammad Arif Kute. Uh, during the uh, one of his journey in Mecca, uh, when he came to for Umrah, so we exchanged some of the ideas. That's uh, you know the uh, what is the lake. Uh, in the Dawa uh, in Malaysia, especially uh, in terms of uh, organizing the talks and and the courses. So we sit together and we come out and we have some notes. And then we identified our role that we can play. Okay. And then mm -hmm. we decided to move uh, to that uh, direction. activities here, yeah, that direction is. This. At this point, you were already settled down in Malaysia, but you met yes, him yes, in yes. Mecca. I see. We're talking about 2008 and 2012, so there is a four years. Okay. Yeah. As I mentioned, we not jump for anything quick. Mm -hmm. We need to study the ground and what's happening and where we can play the role mm -hmm. in a positive way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, in Arabic, it's called Thagara. You cannot fulfill all the gate, but you can, Allah use you to fulfill a gate, one of them. Ah. If you manage to do this, your job is done, Akhi. Some others will come, they will fulfill another, they will fill another gate. Right, they'll, they'll, they'll pass the baton to them. They will yes. continue the barakah, inshallah. Yeah. As long as you fill the gate, Alhamdulillah, you do this. You, 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 you did something that Allah wants from you. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Brother, just a side note, baby, uh, we just wanted to add, that's actually ex exactly what we did in the Barakah Effect. So there was a long time planning this. Like we were questioning ourselves, do we need this? Are we competing with other people? And then we were really like, we wanted to make sure whatever we contribute in this space, it's going to, it's going to complement the da'wah, not to, not to compete with other people. What do we have that's different, that's unique, that we can contribute to, that's unique part of the ummah that's different from the rest? I don't want to steal from this ustad. I want to contribute to their da'wah. And so we believe that, oh, okay, we are, we are working professionals, most of us. Uh, we, are we are trying to implement Islam in our career, in our families. Let's just double down on that. We are not shuyukh. We are not ustad. We are not you know, experts. So that's the identity we want to establish. So I, I, I relate to what you said. So we took a long time to establish yeah, <laughs> this podcast. Mashallah. 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 Okay, mashallah. mashallah. So, so yeah, so so then, then you started this discussion with uh, Haji Haji Arif. Yeah. And then eventually it led to the that that, that event in 2012 with uh, Mufti Mank live in KL. That's what it led, led to, is it? We have studied actually many things together. Uh, the, among them is the uh, uh, to develop a br local brand that is appealing to the local problems or appealing uh -huh. to the local dawa issues right. okay uh, this is the main thing uh, when we discuss with him we first of all we try to address the issues that is facing the muslim community in malaysia mm. while we have some other organization doing very very good job in a broader scale it's right. a bigger thing. right here we try to address the things that locally facing by the Muslim community. Very good, very good. Okay, this is one. Also, we try to address the audience and a specific audience, targeted audience, not so mass in general. So okay. we, uh, we, basically, if you say in Dawa, it's called Jumhur, Ma'rifatul Jumhur. We try to understand who are Dawa, Jumhur, 
and uh, what are the topics or matter that we can deliver to them. And also we thought of the way how they're going to be affected to them. Mm. Okay, so we talk about the da'wah, jumu'ah, and asalib da'wah. Okay, mm. so that's three points we studied very well. And, and also we try to test our ideas actually. This is the first, you know, MMKL 2012. Oh. It's a test ground for us. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that time for us, few things new is okay. This is the first time we organizing a public lecture series. Number one. Yeah. Number two, we bringing a person for the first time in Malaysia who is unknown to Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you know the Mufti Meng, by the way, the, for the is first time in Asia. Yeah. Oh, Asia in general. Wow. First, yeah, in Asia, first time in uh, Asia. Right. Okay. So it's the first time in Asia. First time in Malaysia. Side, side note, brother. He's unknown except for people who go to Da'wah Corner because everyone who goes to Da'wah Corner will see Mufti Mang DVD playing. Correct. Times, right? Exactly, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. And that's also how, how I came to know to him. And then we exchanged some idea. And I gave him the ideas. Why not come to the physically to the Malaysia? And I, I hope that the people will love your talk. And your delivery is good, inshallah. It's going to it put some impact within them. So please come, you know? And this is what he mentioned actually in his lecture. Remember, Brother Faisal? Uh, I don't remember that actually. He yeah, said he that, huh? Yeah, in the lecture, yes. Oh, mashallah. So, uh, so we are the first organizer, first time organizing the event, as well as the speaker is new. And the method we're going to use also is a new. Oh, the method <laughs> is new? How so? Yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, basically it's not a wonderful day convention. It's going to oh. be two talk in a day. Right, two talks, yeah. Okay, okay. and yeah. the venue we're using is the university, not a public hall outside. Oh. And then maybe the promotion is not that strong, you know? So some challenges was there. Yeah. But we say, Bismillah, we're going to test our ground. MC also new, MC untested. Also new. <laughs> okay. And, you know, volunteers also new. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of things, actually. MashaAllah. Together, all new, 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 plus new. Yeah. So we came out with a something new result. This is called is, is, we can contribute in much better than we did right now. So this one lead on there, we start doing the planning to do the convention in bigger scale. Uh, right. So when we come to the idea of establishing the street path convention in Malaysia. Okay, so sorry, brother, just before you start the street path, yeah. so I just wanted to make a comment. So you know, you know how you shared like uh, when you did the publishing, the first three, you burn it, right? So I'm glad that this Mufti Man KL life in KL 2012 didn't result in you burning anything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, okay. Is this something also happened? Uh, if you ask me a question, actually, I can result, uh, I can I can tell you. Oh, okay. That time, the still the DVD is relevant. That time, that particular time, 2012. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Market for the uh, uh, DVD was relevant. Yeah. So a part of the, our work was the multimedia as well. Right. Yes. But we failed to produce the quality that is required for the market. I see. Okay. It's not up to a standard of the day. I see. Yeah. So if the talk see, itself was okay, but the talk the, is the, very good. Right. But the, the quality definition of the video is not that high. I see. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So from, of course, we this is when we have our meeting. We noted that, and then we try to address this issue in the next recording. Okay, mashallah. I remember the cameraman was Uncle Nick, right? That time. Jazakallah uh, khair. Yes, mashallah. He did very good job. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yes, mashallah. I mean, I mean. Okay, so yeah, so sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So coming back to yeah, the, the straight path convention, right? After that, after when we meet the organizer, after this, then we come out that we can contribute in this field as well. A lot of other role we can play because we have good connection with the international speakers as well as local. Mm. And also to, as I mentioned, our focus was to address the local matters. Is the first. Ah, uh, I love that and point. Speed, yeah according to the local need. Right. And also to create some local talent throughout the process of this organizing this event. Ah, okay. Mashallah. So this was all our plan. 
It's not just a day and night and come out the idea. No, it is all our plan. Okay. We sure. are still progressing toward that. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, mashallah. One thing though, brother, I, I it's always struck out to me as, as significant is that there's always a strong emphasis on locals, eh? and that the tarbiyah approach is uh, very strong. So I mean, sometimes what I see is not just in uh, uh, not just in business, but sometimes in dawah as well. The, the mindset is like, oh, we just take experienced people, uh, get them deliver, and then khalas we're done, right? So, but what you have is like you want to take the you want to see the potential that's here. You want the momentum to keep growing and becoming the best, so that from there you can get other great things from. So that long term thinking is there. Correct, correct. You see that dawa must be relevant. Mm. Dawa should be our call to Islam must be addressed to the point. Mm. Well, you talking about something is not relevant to this country. What is the point of talking about that? For example, yeah. I can just give an example. For example, a country. Yeah. People are not. Exercising the magic there, seher. Right. Yeah. Then we start talking about the magic. <laughs> What is the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Mashallah. Okay. Yeah. So let's say a country. The real problem is grave grave worshippers. Okay. For this country, Shir for this country. Let's say another country is the problem is grave worshiping. Okay, the kuburiin. Yep. Okay. Then you start addressing about the riba. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So it goes on like this. So you have to be your dawa must be relevant to the locality. Okay. So this is what is our plan to address the issues facing people here. Dawa facing in Malaysia. Hmm. Mashallah. This is one of the goal and objective of the uh, Strepa Convention, as well as we, if you remember, we always use the local project manager. You remember that? Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And also, our preference was to choose the volunteer as much as possible as the local. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because we wanted to uh, uh, increase the culture of. Uh, Uh, organizing the events such TSP by the local people. Yeah, mashallah. Because they are aware of the country more than I do. Uh, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, I love this approach actually because uh, it's just because I, I have been vol volunteering for other organizations as well. So what makes TSP very unique is that there's a sense of loyalty. There's a sense like the same people behind the scenes, and then they grow over the years. You see them developing, um, like and mashallah, like it's nice to see that, and they have the expertise in that. So they have an expertise of project management in organizing that event. So that's also a, a skill, and that's and actually we need these skills for dawah. People think like dawah is just about the speaking per se. People look at the speaker on stage, but all these other things, all super important actually. Mashallah. Super super important. Yeah. Actually, if you think the whole thing, my role is very small. <laughs> yeah. Very little. Yeah, mashallah. Even sometimes you don't find any rule there. <laughs> yeah, It's but that, huge, yeah. but planting that seed—that's the one that counts, mashallah. You know, brother, I always believe one thing that Malaysia have a lot of uh, capable individuals and parties that they can contribute in a bigger form. This is I always believe that. As a writer, as an organizer, as a speaker, okay. There is a lot of potential capabilities within the Malaysian. I always believed that. So I actually encouraged the local uh, writers, okay, to come forward to publish their books with us with Dawa Corner. Actually, we publish about four titles as local writers. Mm. And also, I told the local publishers, please. You deserve more higher stage than you're using now. Come on board with us. We'll make your books in international level. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. So you know the few publishers actually their books first time see uh, overseas through us. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's, so it is not only to be the Dawa Corner books to be go overseas. No, actually we asking all the publishers come please join us. 
let's lead the country in in, a, in the in the world industry level. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah. That's nice. Wow. So maybe just just share to, to wrap it up. Like, uh, what what's the current? What's next for Dawa Corner? What's uh, what's the next vision? And what can we expect next that you're passionate about? Some projects that you want to share with us. As a vision in Dawa Corner Bookstore, we believe that we can be among the world most reliable source for authentic Islamic contents, not only in Malaysia, to be among the world most reliable source for authentic Islamic content. This is a vision for Dawa Corner. It's not we alone, but we wanted to be among the others who contributed a lot to this industry, but we wanted to be among the top of the reliable source for authentic Islamic content. Okay, but as a Malaysian company, we believe in Dawa Corner to make Malaysian Islamic publishing industry to the world stage. Sure. Okay? Because we believe that Malaysia can contribute in a bigger scale to the Muslim and non-Muslim alike out there. I'm not talking about Malaysia, out there. Right. Mm -hmm. I always believe that Malaysians are capable and they have full abilities to do that job. Because let me share with you something very interesting. You know, the Malaysia have, or Malaysian have, if I say the right correct, mm. Malaysian have an, a big respect in the people heart. In the what? In, in people, other people heart. Hearts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, the when I meet people from UK, for example, from South Africa, mm. and from other parts of the Arabian world, in mm. When you say about Malaysia, oh, something that, you, uh, let me share with you something very interesting, okay? Yeah. One, once we attend the Jidda Book Fair, and also we attend in the Sharjah Book Fair, Sharjah in UK, uh, UAE. Yep. So in our booth, we put the Malaysian flag. Oh, okay. You know, we received many customers. They came to our stall, not to buy a book, to take a picture with the Malaysian flag. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Is, okay. Now let's say there is many other stores out there. Indian flags is there. Algerian flags is there. Kuwait is flags is there. Right. In fact, behind us is the Lebanese flags is there. Sure. I didn't see none of them go there and take picture. Okay. Why they come to our store and they take the picture with the Malaysian flag? Yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to raise a question. Is mean that people look to you as a marker? Sure. So, that is not only marker, they're also looking from you in the bigger delivery to them, how you can contribute to the world. So, I think that is one of the industry that the Malaysians can contribute, especially Islamic industry of publishing. Mm. Ah, okay. And inshallah, the Awakona can play a role to, uh, you know, to, to lead that uh, uh, journey. Okay, okay. May Allah make it, make grant you all, all of your success. As well, inshallah. Oh, mashallah. May Allah grant uh, barakah and uh, realizing this vision. And we hope to play, to collaborate with you. I'm always with you, inshallah. <laughs> I'll, try, yeah, I'll try my best, mashallah. So, mashallah. So, I think this is uh, really, so maybe yeah, the takeaway point for us and for the listeners out there, step up. Right, we have the platform here. We have the brothers and sisters behind the scenes who want to make this a success. The writers, the publishers, the organizers. You have a niche skill contribute in any way. Uh, Brother Farid has been involved in so many different sides of the spectrum. Uh, mashallah, I have joined my stream in in one, what way that I can. I try, I hope I can continue to contribute more. Brother Farid, I want to ask you a very uh, I don't know if it's a tough question, but you can be very frank with this. You as a because your yeah your wife is Malaysian you're technically makes your children Malaysian as well, but you are technically not a Malaysian citizen per se right? Okay. So you're saying that Malaysians we have a lot of potential. You can see a, a lot of potential in us being on the world stage, but why 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 is the case? What 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 does it take to realize that potential? What's holding us back? <laughs> a, a tough one, right? Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, 
let me share, maybe I'm right or wrong, but what my uh, observation is. Sure. I think there is a cultural uh, tradition play a role holding back the Malaysian to come forward. Mm. These people wanted to be always humble. <laughs> okay? So anytime you ask them to come forward, they think is a proud. The couple. Oh, they think it's pride. Okay. It's a pride. So I think this is the this is the major uh, um, most of the time this is the things that behind the holding the people mm. come forward. Right. So we have to explain to them this pride is required. So you have to come forward. It's no problem. It can be, you can make a mistake in the first step. Okay, but you will discover your abilities, unlimited abilities you can discover when you come forward. Mm. Talking to the especially talking to our industries related people who can write. By the way, Brother Faisal. Let me share with you. There is a local publishing company produce their books in English. They have failed to succeed. Mm -hmm. The same book, Malaysian writer, Malaysian designer, Malaysian artists and illustrators. Mm -hmm. Same book in the same condition published by an UK's publisher become world bestseller. Huh. Wallahi, nothing changed. Same thing exactly. Huh. I'm not giving the name here. But it's now the same book. I re We refuse to buy from them locally. I am getting the book from UK. Oh, subhanAllah. How bad is it? Yeah. Okay, what is the point here now? Uh -huh. Because when they publish book in English, they fail to promote the book as English book. They failed to promote it as an English book. Yes. So you, they were so emphasized on their Malay books, they forgot that there is a book they publish in English. <laughs> mm. so, okay? So they are, they don't believe the, in the ability of their own work. Oh. So we have to bring back some trust on our product. is the best. Confidence mm. level. We have mm. to bring back to our product. Allah. Yeah. So I believe that we are capable and we have a lot of abilities and we can deliver much better than we do. Please come forward and make this industry together to the world stage. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Brother, I just want to share with you um, uh, when you back in the straight path 2019, what was the theme again? Uh, 2020 was to be steadfast. Free to Allah. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one. So uh, you you give so that was the first time that I got the opportunity to give a talk and you gave the topic to me was bravery and generosity. Correct. I still remember my first impression when I look at it was this is crazy. <laughs> this is such a difficult topic. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> like when I look at the titles, the others are easier. Why didn't you give me this one? <laughs> I, I, I didn't tell you this. This was just behind me behind the scenes. Yeah, when I was looking at it. So I was like. Oh, this is crazy, man. I don't think I can talk about this. I don't know anything about bravery. I don't know anything about... I mean, generosity, maybe I can I can read up about it. But oh, I don't know anything about this. I was giving it a lot of thought, brother. And then I thought, you know what? This Ummah needs courage. And this is the chance that Allah has given me to do something which is uh, out of my comfort zone. But now I have to push myself to learn about it. This is an opportunity for me. So I have to demonstrate this first. I have to walk the talk first. If I chicken out from this, I cannot expect other people to take courage. Right? So, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what behind the scenes, right? Then, then only that that's what took so much courage behind the scenes for me to say to you, okay, okay, I will try, inshallah. <laughs> you did very well, mashallah, tabarakallah. You did very, very, very well, mashallah. Yeah, yeah. True, true. In you fact, I, well. I listened to it a few times. Mm. Oh, mashallah. Allah Allah. Myself, yes. I mean, you did very well, Mashallah. Oh, Mashallah. Allah Mubarak. Yeah, so I think the lesson from me is that, yeah, it's always scary, uh, but you try your best and you seek the help of Allah. You seek consultation from your friends, your teachers. You try your best. What's the worst that could happen, right? Because there are people always think, like, what's the worst that could happen? But what's the best that could happen? <laughs> Mashallah, so much khair can come from it if, if Allah grants you the chance. I wanted to share one more thing before I forgot. Ah, it's very important note as well throughout the journey of developing this brand. 
you cannot do and I learned that you cannot do yourself alone anything. Hmm. You need a dedicated team, a loyal team. <sighs> it share with you with their soul and heart. Hmm. I always appreciate it. I have a team, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and I'm proud of them. Every single one was with us or with us now. Oh, I appreciate their all effort. If you are not there, we are not today here. That's all. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. With the team, we can achieve more. With the team. Yeah. And also, the, lately, we're focusing on our goal a lot. The goal that we're setting for every year is something achievable, not difficult for people. I learned that whenever you focus on your goal for every year, let's say 2022, we have goals to achieve. And easy to work with the team. The, every single mm -hmm. one in the team members, they know their role. Mm -hmm. Very easy. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we learned something from our religion. When every single one focus on goals, things happen very easily. Just take an example of the Salah. Yeah. Yeah. One leader, yeah. one instruction, thousand of people, second, they've been. The point is that is focus on the goals. So uh -huh. Alhamdulillah, especially right now, the, in the in Dawa Kona books too, it's doing very, very well, Alhamdulillah, despite the challenges of the pandemic and all. Ah, uh -huh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, we are doing well. Oh, mashallah. And Bada Tawfiq Allah Azza wa Jal is goes to my dedicated team. Ah, uh, mashallah. Allah mubarak. I love that point, uh, brother, because uh, the same thing as well, the Barakah effect, even we discuss with each other, we can't do this by ourselves. If you tell us to do, to publish certain episodes, like Faisal to do it, I will, I will, I will expire by episode three. <laughs> so, but because we have the five of us and we kind of pick up each other, and I tell the team like, even though I'm the one like pushing them, but actually, if they if they were not there, I cannot even push them. I cannot even push myself. <laughs> so, we need the team. Like we we are social creatures, and that's where the barakah comes when we like we have the same principles, the same vision. We realize it together. We head towards like you said to head the same goal. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, mashallah, jazakallah khairan, brother Farid. It's on a, a bit longer than we expected. So, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you very much for your sharing. Uh, sorry to take so much of your time. Yeah? <laughs> it's okay, inshallah, I'm enjoying, alhamdulillah. Barakah, yeah. in fact, is always barakah. Yeah. <laughs> May Allah barakah in time, barakah in content, barakah in everything. <laughs> Michelle. So, yeah, maybe you want to share with us some insights. Uh, that we want to ask all our guests. So I want to ask you, brother Farid, like what legacy do you want to leave behind? This is a serious question, Akhi. <laughs> uh, it's called in Arabic, Athrul Mar'i Fi Dunya. Athrul Mar'i Fi Dunya. A person legacy to his world. Okay? After you leave, what do you want to do? Put the legacy as, as a mark of yours. Am I correct? Am I right? Yeah. Okay, first of all, it's very connected to my profession. I wanted to leave a legacy of a profession that continue to spread the message of truth. Mm. So people will remember me, Bedinilla, with my profession that I start and it will continue. Okay. Okay, this is one. And also among my legacy that I wanted to leave in this world when I'm around is the progeny, all my children that fulfill the duty of da'wah in a way that benefit Islam and Ummah. The third and last is that I wanted to win some friends that remember me after I left them. This is the last point I wanted to tell you why. When some friends, I saw them in Mecca, they lost their life during the pandemic. Oh. I was so amazed by the friends that remember them. Oh. I was so amazed. I mentioned in my one of my articulations. Oh. I was so amazed that 
can I have this kinds of friendship, true friendship? Remember me after I go the way that they have been remembered. Especially a brother from, Egypt, uh, from Sudan. He was very close to us. When he passed away, nobody know. When I, I, I traveled from Malaysia and the next day he passed away, I spread the first person to share the message to around. Subhanallah, I was amazed the messages that I called that I received. People praying for him. I was just asking myself, oh Allah, is it going to happen for me? Inshallah. Some people may not think this is a legacy. Brother, I want this as a legacy for me. Please pray for me when I'm married. Wow. Because the hadith mentioned, dua uka, you are dua in dhaharul ghaib. Dhaharul ghaib. Gaib means I can be in the cupboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mashallah. Wow, that's a very powerful reminder, mashallah. Please pray for me, Akhi. I'm everyone here listening. Please pray for me when I'm not around you. In fact, pray now as well as after. Yeah, mashallah. <laughs> Barakallah fikum. Okay. You remind me of a hadith, uh, brother. I think it's in Bukhari. When Prophet uh, asked, like, what, what's your testimonial of so and so who passed away? And so some of them said that he's a good man. Some of them said this is a not so good man, so on. And the Prophet ﷺ said the meaning of the hadith is, "You are the witnesses of Allah on the earth." Correct. So we want that we want the righteous people to give a testimonial that, mashallah, so and so is a is a good Muslim. So that's what we pray for, mashallah. Mm -hmm. Jesus, us and happen to us. Yeah, mashallah. Wow. Yeah. So we want we want to know as well. And maybe if you can share with us, uh, if there's one uh, one reference, one ayah of the Quran, one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu one quote from the Salaf, which inspires you the most, what would that be? This can be a bit longer, is it okay? Okay, inshallah. Okay, okay. I recall my study times in Dhaka, in Bangladesh, the institute called uh, Al-Mahad Al-Ali, Al-Mahad Al-Ali, the one where I made the dif my diploma under the Jamia al oh. We have a teacher from Jordan, Sheikh Rayat Sabri, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he made the commentary now for Bukhari and Muslim, mashallah. He's still alive and young man. Oh, inshallah. Okay? So he used to love me so much, mashallah, tabarakallah, and he used to teach us ulum al-hadith. Oh, okay. At the same time, he used to give us talk after Maghrib every day. Oh, mashallah. Okay. I think he was uh, uh, using some of the references of the hadith books for that particular event. So let me give you a bit of situation for that time. You know, the... Uh, the time I was there in this institution, all children go to the holiday in their house. I don't have a place to go holiday because I don't have any place to go. Oh, okay. Okay. I remember this very well. Okay. Uh, we can, no one in this, uh, the campus except me and another one or two people. Oh. So another two, one or two people is their management maybe, but I am the student only. Oh. I have no place to go. I also remember that I have hardly two pair of dress for me. I think the I used to use wash every day and next day. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, so the situation was that time for me is the real situation actually. I see. So always thinking of uh, future, how I'm going to be, where I'm going to live, how I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. This kinds of mindset was set for me at that moment. Uh, you know, as a human, as a young man, yeah. You see around you, uh, others are going. So you have this feeling, I think it's a natural. This I have. Mm. So one day, this sheikh gave us a talk and mentioned one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Hadith is narrated by Tirmidhi. Even though I know this hadith is many times before, I, but it never draw attention of, to me. But this is the first time as though I am hearing the first time this hadith revealing from Muhammad Sallallahu to me direct. Oh. The way emotionally Sheikh explained is super, he is super. And remember till today, this is the turning point in my life 
for the next of my life. Oh, mashallah. This is the hadith, very famous hadith. Is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Remember the hadith is me, no need to mention is it? Ihfadillah ya hafadka, is that the way? A straightforward, that, that's the hadith. Oh, maybe you can share it with, uh, with us. Like, yeah. Ihfadillah ya hafadka. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, Kuntu radifu nabiya sallallahu alayhi sallam. Waqal, inni u'allimuka, ya gulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Then he started, Ihfadillah ya hafadka. Ihfadillah tajiduhu tijahak. We just stand... Fasta'in billah. Wa iza sa'alta fasta'illah. Wa iza sta'anta fasta'in billah. Wa'alam. Lo ijtama'an. Lo ijtama'an. There's a few narration, but lo ijtama'at al-ummatu kullaha. Ala yanfa'aka bishayin lan yanfa'aka illa ma katabahu Allahu lak. Wa lo ijtama'at al-ummatu kullaha. La yadurruka bishayin lan yadurruka illa ma katabahu Allahu alayk. Rufi'at al-aqlamu wa juffati suhruf. I think that Oh boy, I mean, it's, oh my cousin, I, I can say, you, yeah, Gulam in a very beautiful way of saying to a young man. Young man, oh, mashallah. Yeah. Yeah. So Prophet Islam called this young man, oh young man. By the way, in Arabic, yeah, Gulam is so super, so high, so meaningful. Oh, is it? Okay. So it's but not it, just young uh, man, there's yeah, a status to it. Yeah, right? okay. English translator maybe say, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Translator yeah. that is mean is in Arabic. In Arabic have different, totally different emotional meaning. I see, I see. And you are sitting behind the Prophet next oh, to me. Oh, yeah, that's now. true. That's the context, yeah. And yeah. I say, I'm going to teach you some words. Yeah. And the Prophet are offering you to, to teach you something that he's excited, of course. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was listening to with full attention. He said, uh, I will instruct you or I will guide you. I'll tell you in some matters. Okay. Then he said, yes. The number one, he said, be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you going to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By following commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will preserve you. Say, first one, ihfadillah. You preserve his commandment, he will preserve you. So we sometimes ask Allah preservation without preserving anything of him. Mm, and Allah save us from that. Amen. And then he said, save God his rights, Allah's rights. He will be ever with you. Okay, you save God his rights, he will be everywhere with, with you. Sometimes we bring in the last rights everywhere, and then we say, You are with me always. It's mm. not, it doesn't work that way. If you back back to him alone, if you back for anything, back to him, cry to him alone, not to others. And if you need assistance, only supplicate to him, ask him alone. Okay, and remember that the whole people of the world gather together to benefit you in certain matters of your affairs. They will not. They will not able to benefit you in any way, in any form, except if Allah allow them to happen. So it goes in other way. If the, all the people come together to harm you in any matters, any affairs of yours. That can't do that unless it's Allah allow to it happen. Because he said the predestined against you, which is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pen is his off. And the ink is dried. So our Sheikh explained to us this hadith akhi, in a way that everything relevant to me, that particular oh. position. Oh mashallah. Okay, I came to know the al qada wa qadar in that moment totally from a different perspective. Oh. So I found that between the reality of today, my condition, yeah. the qada and qadar written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me, one word Allah keep in the between. It's called your strive and a struggle. Allah will make it happen. Asai. Okay, I have to. Okay, and asai. Illa ma sa'a in Surah 39 verse. Okay, so I understand that. Okay, this is Allah predestined for us. Why happening today this? 
and what going to happen and end up is also written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. In between, Allah give me one chance to work hard. To work hard, okay. This is what I exactly I'm doing today, Akhi, from that moment till today. Mashallah. And I have, I have end up with the result to saying that, Wallahi, I never asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything in my life except I have received it sooner or later. Oh, mashallah. This is the hadith that's motivated me the most. Mashallah. 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 It's beautiful. Zakla <laughs> khairan. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, mashallah. Yeah, because the hadith has a lot about qadr. So, the context of the hardship that you were going through sort of motivated you to make a choice from the, from moving then. And, and it began by asking Allah for help. And After since this, then, I never thought of in my past how difficult it was. Oh. Except for learning. Yeah. I never complained for anything that happening and happening today. There's a lot of full of experiencing challenges every day. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a very normal and everyday life. Uh, how, how old are you back then? At, at this? I, I think as I was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm around 16. Oh, wow. Okay, mashallah. 16 years old. Wow. Wow. So much barakah from that advice from many decades ago, mashallah. mashallah. On top of that, brother, I wanted to also, you know, that I, I never saw my, my mother again. I never saw my mother. You know, that in two years, you remember nothing. Yeah. yeah. But after this, I found that every single human I met, that they know my mother, they told me one thing. Mm. You know that your mother always pray for you before she pass away. Oh. Even though she have many other kids, but when it is come to you, she have a special door for you always. Oh, mashallah. My aunties, my uncles, my relatives, my Korea Punya people, every single one I meet, they say the statement is same, Akhi. You know, your mother was used to pray for you a lot. Oh, subhanAllah. Inshallah. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to fulfill my dutifulness to her by praying. Ah, I never met her. Mm. The only thing I received from her is that she used to pray for me. I believe that the mother, the fathers, do ah for very important things. Yeah, Inshallah. Yeah, reminds us as well for those of us with children, never underestimate your dua because sometimes it's the mind that your parents. Yeah, uh, and your parents, mashallah. Yeah. Sometimes it's way after you passed away and still the barakah will keep pouring in. I always always remember that it's my mother dua for everything. Mashallah. Mashallah. May Allah 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 Mashallah, yeah. So I, I think one of the takeaway points from the hadith that you were sharing as well is that this inspired you to move away from because I because a lot of people when they go through difficult times, it, there's always a tendency to move into that victim mindset, right? Yeah. But it's to, to, to take it as a as a point, as a straight springboard for learning. I think that's a, the key takeaway point that I got from what you're saying, that how it inspired you to, to change your life. Allah is only kind of who is the owner of the uh, changer of the uh, the situation, Just um, just Move forward, run to him, he will run, he will come forward to you. Ah, yes, another yes. hadith mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. MashaAllah, mashaAllah. Allah Mubarak. Oh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, uh, brother. So, last but not least, uh, how can our listeners get in touch with you, uh, your work, and your organization? InshaAllah. <laughs> Okay, uh, actually, it's, uh, we're talking about Dawa Corner here. So, the, our website is called dawabookstore.com.my. No, sorry, I repeat again dawabookstore.com. And uh, all the FP and IG also Dawa Corner Bookstore or Dawa Bookstore. You can find all the information about my activities in, the, in this platform, social media and website. As well as the, oh, sometimes I write articles. You can find it in inkoffaith.com. Mm, think of faith. Of yes. So most of my article is there, especially the which is the uh, not political one. I mean the religious 
and the main articles is all up there. But sometimes I write about my community and my nation and my country. It's mostly published by the local newspapers. I see. Okay, okay. Zakhla Khairan. All right, so mashallah, thank you very much, uh, Brother Farid, for your sharing and for dedicating time. Uh, mashallah, I benefited so much from our conversation today. Uh, any any last takeaway points before we end our conversation today? I think it's a very, uh, for me, very unique and a special platform that you created as a, under the Baraka effect. Uh, I think uh, you are addressing, actually, uh, sometime I... I saw the youth are listening to your programs while they are working. This is very interesting. Oh, and I asked them, what are you doing? What are you listening to? Then referring to uh, Baraka effects. So it's oh. me that is, uh, you try to address the, the issues that are relevant to today's youth. So I think it's a very, very good effort that you did. And uh, please continue with more, much more uh, individuals as well as the expert of the field as well as the topic that are relevant to the community here i think this is needed and is uh, what are you doing such is a unique approach i think even not only you i think other people must also initiate these kinds of activities may allah put baraka in baraka i mean i mean i mean i mean yeah i love that point i was telling their brothers as well i mean we tell each other like if we yeah. can start this idea, then somebody picks it up and does a better job. Alhamdulillah, that's yeah. even better than that. Mm. We're not in this to compete with each other. The uh, good thing is in Dawah, we never take it as a compete. Yes, mm. yes, 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 yes. Never take it as a competition. Yeah, true. We have idea. You know, yesterday I have a company come to regarding the books. Wallahi, exactly what I used to do, I give the ideas. Uh, if I even get it, I give the same ideas. Oh, nice. You share idea, Allah will fill, fill you more with more ideas. Mm -hmm. You whole idea, you take it to the cover, you give not no one. Mm. MashaAllah. Spread the ideas, inshallah. MashaAllah, inshallah. So thank you very much again. Uh, we hope we make dua that Allah Azza wa blesses you, your family, all of your efforts, grants barakah upon barakah. Uh, we hope to continue collaborating with each other. I love the point that you made in the, in the recent event with Dr. Ali al -Barghuthi. Like, we want we want more people to come on board with our collaborators, and we want to we want to use these platforms to promote each other and expand as long as we're the same values. I really love that. I respect that. I think that's one of the things that we want to do as well in the Baraka Effect to build communities of excellence, striving for excellence in 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 Akhirah and dunya as well. So you, you, any, anytime you need assistance or we, we, you have opportunities for us, we'd love to step up. <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah. No, we're not invite you. We force you to come. On. <laughs> okay, keep forcing <laughs> us. Keep forcing. Inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you for forcing us. <laughs> okay. So Jazakumullah Khairan. So uh, may, may Allah may Allah grant barakah to you and your family and 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 success in dunya in in in, in akhirah. Amen. Amen. So, Brother Farid, just to close our discussion today, uh, please complete the following sentence uh, in your own words, in your own perspective as well. Uh, the key to Barakah is? Key to Barakah is to have a, to be among the good friends, reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have a, a more, to be among the family members that reminding you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. Okay. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. To be surrounding with your uh, colleague in the work that reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to find yourself among the many others that your health is okay, that you're doing good, and your provision is out there, at least for the night. You know, as referring the hadith, yeah. in the Adab al-Mufrat, is itself is baraka. Okay? So yeah. baraka means not only in riziki, baraka is interpreted to many ways. Okay? And also to find a wife encouraging you in your job. Oh, yeah. 
to support you with the ideas. Oh, be patient with you. One time is required. Like me now, I'm talking to you. I have another appointment, but this is okay. Oh, mashallah. He said, go ahead. No problem. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. This is also barakah. This is how I see the barakah. Mashallah, mashallah. Allah mubarak. All right. Jazakumullah khairan, Brother Farid. So with that, that concludes our discussion for today. Jazakumullah khairan. So, so we end here, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Wa nastaghfiruka wa natabu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum.